it's um, 8 a.m. Uh, California time. It's time to get started on our Tiny ML talk series. Uh, my name is um, Evgeny Gusev. I am from uh, Qualcomm AI Research and also Tiny ML Foundation. And uh, today I'm going to be your host. Uh, we have a very special session today, uh, which is a bit unusual uh, compared to our regular uh, sessions. Today we are going to have an overview of um, of the highlights we had at the Tiny ML inaugural uh, EMEA uh, forum that happened a month ago, and it was quite successful in terms of the, the quality of presentations, quality of the attendance, all the discussions, and that's exactly what we would like to review today. Really to to rewind the tape months ago and, and really uh, share with you the highlights and the excitement of the tiny ML uh, week uh, in Europe a month ago. So the presenters will be uh, uh, Professor Theo, uh, Theo Charides from, from, from the University of Cyprus and uh, Peter DeBacher. So both of them were the chairs of the, of the, of the forum Unfortunately, Peter has a emergency in, in, in Belgium today. There was like a flooding emergency, so he had to take care of, uh, of things there. So Theo will cover um, uh, for Peter as well. So before we start, uh, it is my pleasure to acknowledge uh, Tiny Mail Talk sponsors. So you have both stock sponsors and strategic partners. So you see there is a quite, quite long list of uh, companies who support us. And we are very grateful for this. So it's ARM, Deployed, H Impulse, MZ Visual Sense, Greenwave Technologies, Latent AI, HOTG, Maxim Integrated, Kixo, Qualcomm, uh, Reality AI, SenseML, Sensense, and Sintient. And uh, if you, your company interested, you, you, can, you can send more uh, requests to sponsorship at tinymail.org or to Olga at tinymail.org. Uh, so as many of you may know, uh, we are in the middle of uh, tinymail uh, vision challenge, which is happening as we speak. So uh, submission is still open until uh, August 20. And um, you can go to the to the website. Uh, we do it jointly with Hacksters, and um, and uh, I think the website is in there, and uh, and you can participate there. And also there are quite a few sponsors who are supporting this event. It's Arm, H Impulse, Hymix, Qualcomm, Lattice, Pixar, Imaging, Syncells, and Luxem. Okay, uh, so as usual, we are going to have our next talk. Actually, it's going to be happening next week. So the presenter will be a very well-known uh, scientist in this space. It's uh, Daniela Pau from uh, ST Micro. He's a technical director and also IEEE and ST fellow, fellow there. He's going to talk about better productivity leverage and AI um, community-driven interoperability. So please join us next Tuesday at 8 a.m. as usual. At this point, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Professor Theo Theocharidis from, uh, from the University of uh, Cyprus. He is an associate professor there in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And also uh, he is a part of the Innovation Center of Excellence uh, there, which is called the Kio Center. Uh, he received his PhD degree from Penn State, uh, working in the area of low power architectures. And uh, he was uh, honored to be the Robert Owens Memorial Scholarship in 2005. And uh, he, since then, he's been with the University of Cyprus, uh, where he leads and directs activities in the embedded and application specific system on chips. So he's a senior member of IEEE, a member of a a ACM, and uh, editor of IEEE and he's organized many conferences okay and the co-chair was supposed to be Peter again due to the emergency he um, cannot join us today but I should again uh, emphasize and acknowledge that both Peter and uh, 
Kiva did an amazing job in uh, sharing the, the tiny ML I mean, I mean, uh, a month ago. And that's what they're going to share with us in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. I assume the stage is yours, Theo. Please take it over. Uh, thank you, Evgeny. Can you hear me, everybody? I guess. Um, so let me start by, first of all, thanking you, Evgeny, for the opportunity you gave to Peter and myself to uh, give to the community an overview of what happened at the MEA Forum. Um, on behalf of Peter, I would like to apologize. He had, uh, as most, some of you are aware, there were some uh, um, uh, flooding in Belgium this morning. And of course, uh, uh, he had to uh, ensure that his uh, uh, house and family were okay. Uh, so I, we decided for me to go ahead and uh, uh, present the, um, uh, the highlights of the, um, the forum. But uh, Eko Evgeny, uh, Peter was uh, uh, a tremendous help uh, both uh, uh, to the event as well and also to the ML, to tiny ML community as well. So hopefully he will be back in the next uh, event uh, and uh, he won't be affected by the flooding uh, uh, long term. Um, so before I start giving everybody uh, the highlights of the forum, let me first uh, uh, thank the sponsors of the forum because uh, it made it possible to have the forum uh, free to everybody that wanted to watch it. Uh, and uh, specifically, uh, Newton.ai, who was our premier sponsor, uh, the executive sponsors are Edge Impass and Qualcomm and Cintiant, and of course, Platinum sponsors Infineon and Reality AI, Gold sponsors Latent AI and SenseML, and the Silver sponsors that uh, feature um, well known tiny ML partners such as Emza, Greenways, HOTC, uh, Imagimo, Pixo, Seed Studio, and of course, ST Microelectronics. Um, so, Obviously, uh, we all are aware with the uh, tiny ML community and the, the meetups and uh, the frequent events that we host every week. So the, the tiny ML, of course, uh, we know it's now a global movement. And of course, the MEA community could not be um, underrepresented in this. So there are approximately 2,000 uh, tiny ML meetup members in the MEA region that joined in the last year. Uh, representing uh, 15 countries in the region. And uh, uh, that includes 507 members uh, in Africa as well. So uh, we see that in setting up such an event, we obviously had to have uh, a strong and diverse uh, technical committee. Uh, at that point, at this point, I would like to extend my uh, appreciation and thanks to everybody that helped besides uh, Peter and myself. Uh, we had tremendous support from uh, the rest of the committee members. The committee members were diverse, not only geographically, but also uh, representing both industry and academia and spanning across 13 uh, EMEA countries. Uh, so on behalf of Peter and myself, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, their help. And uh, this would not have been made possible without their uh, contributions to the forum as well. Um, and uh, as we all know, the event would not be made possible without the logistical support that we received by the um, foundations, uh, and specifically Ira, Betty, Olga, and Rosina, who have uh, helped. Uh, uh, and I'm sure that any of you who were presenters at the event uh, had an interaction with them. And we all know that this was not going to be possible without their uh, dedication and uh, help. Um, the success that again mentioned earlier is actually reflected in the numbers. Uh, we have, and this is uh, the slide here indicates the, 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 the quantitative uh, uh, success of the, of the forum. We had four days, uh, which uh, uh, even though we plan to have around four hours long, due to the interaction, due to the, 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 the engagement with the community, uh, some of those days we actually exceeded the length and there were very fruitful live discussions between the attendees. Uh, we had two tutorials, uh, five keynote uh, talks. Four of them were very uh, technical relevant and I will give some more information about them later. Uh, we featured 15 tiny talks and seven lightning talks for various sources 
uh, both academy and industry that showcase the progress uh, in research and innovation in the in in tiny mill. Uh, we had three panel discussions and networking events. Uh, for uh, the first time, we actually gave the floor to the next generation of uh, researchers and entrepreneurs and uh, uh, stakeholders in the tiny mill community, and that were our uh, students. Uh, the students actually presented their ongoing research, um, either PhD or MSc or even industry-sponsored uh, students uh, participated in the student forum. Um, we, of course, uh, gave the floor to our partners by uh, allowing them to showcase their um, ongoing research and innovation activities through four uh, partner sessions. And uh, as you saw earlier, we had sponsorship by 16 uh, companies for which we are very appreciative as it enabled the event to be as, um, uh, as uh, open as possible and uh, attended uh, at large by the community. And this is evidenced by the 1,687 registered attendees that uh, um, uh, registered for the event. Uh, and of course, uh, the 58 speakers uh, that presented their work, their views, their insights, uh, uh, their, um, uh, their, um, their uh, thoughts about how uh, not only technically what, you know, how we advance uh, uh, things in the tiny mill community, but also on how the MEA community can grow together uh, and become uh, uh, one of the leaders, let's say, uh, in the tiny mill movement uh, uh, in the next uh, few years. Uh, I would like to thank all the speakers on behalf of the committee, uh, and I'm hopeful that they will actively remain engaged with the community as well. Um, let me start uh, the highlights of the forum by uh, chronologically talking to you guys about the event. Uh, the first uh, uh, day we started the event with two very uh, insightful tutorials. Uh, we featured a tutorial uh, from ST Microelectronics, uh, which was hands-on and demonstrated through live demo the use of their context awareness function pack in an effort to show how we can uh, uh, fuse various sensor data uh, and um, uh, provide a a a contextual awareness uh, through the tiny microcontrollers that ST is working on, as well as the frameworks, the software frameworks that, put every that puts everything together. Uh, and then the second tutorial was even more uh, technical in the context of uh, uh, presenting something that uh, maybe uh, currently right now uh, may not be yet adapted for, by the industry, but I strongly think that this will become the foundation uh, for future tiny mail um, uh, products and specifically bioinspired neuromorphic circuits and architectures uh, that was uh, presented by Professor Giacomo Indiveri. Uh, from ETH Zurich and, of course, the University of uh, Zurich. Um, let me give you a little bit of an insight on what the ST tutorial was about. So basically, if we use various types of sensors, let that be um, uh, wearable sensors or any other type of sensors, including video and audio, and uh, use all these sensors, and we can put together the data that's presented by the sensors in uh, a tiny mail framework, uh, we can uh, generate uh, contextual awareness uh, uh, related to the whereabouts of the application, the, the environment, the, um, the, the, the physical and mental status of, say, the people involved, and so on. So the tutorial feature uh, a hands-on demonstration of the uh, function pack, the context awareness function pack. And of course, STM Nucleus set of uh, microcontrollers. Uh, so the attendees were able to understand how to build a very tiny model and start solving some real world problems using, uh, um, excuse me, the hardware and the software uh, provided by ST Microelectronics. Um, the next tutorial was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, more futuristic, if I can use the word. Uh, Professor Giacomo Indiveri from uh, uh, ETH Zurich 
Uh, he presented his uh, view, uh, his uh, overview, let's say, on how neuroscience can derive strategies that can help us build robust, high performance, low latency computations uh, using uh, neural models, neural elements that share the same uh, properties of our biological uh, counterparts and specifically uh, how we can build systems that can uh, emulate how the physical neurons, uh, the, 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 the biological neurons uh, work. And uh, he did present some also examples of circuits as well, and uh, some applications on how uh, this technology can help uh, extreme edge use cases, as he called them, uh, focusing on how to reduce the power, how to do local on the sensor processing, and um, uh, how to have an autonomous edge device that does not require connection to the cloud and so on. Uh, Neuromorphic intelligence, as uh, most of you hopefully uh, have already uh, followed through the tutorial, is of course inspired by how our own neurobiology and neuroscience uh, works. Uh, it employs physics, and by physics, I mean both in terms of silicon as well as uh, membristive devices that can be used to emulate our biological neurons. Uh, it covers the entire spectrum, both digital and analog, mixed signal, as well as uh, common logic circuits. And of course, uh, if put together, if used together, uh, can uh, yield application specific devices uh, that are optimal for edge uh, computing. So the first day was, uh, as I uh, would like to call it more educational, uh, but the event also featured uh, four technical keynotes and I will also present this uh, in a more, uh, in a chronological order, starting by the first keynote that we had, which was given by Blair Newman, uh, the chief technology officer of Newton.ai. Uh, Blair actually talked about uh, Newton's uh, uh, AutoML framework that is used, um, uh, starts by looking at each neuron individually and using a neuron by neuron approach. Uh, essentially uh, focuses on presenting to people that are agnostic of the underlying architecture, maybe uh, not even understanding fundamental data science uh, things, uh, and enables them to shrink, uh, minimize, or miniaturize, if you wish, uh, the trained models so that they can be placed on uh, tiny ML uh, devices such as uh, very tiny microcontrollers and uh, so on. Uh, in fact, Blair used the cardi cardiac arrhythmia case study to show how efficient the Newton framework can reduce the models uh, when compared to other um, optimization frameworks employed in uh, uh, TensorFlow, for example, and other um, uh, in TensorFlow Lite as well. Um, Next, we had uh, an overview of what is the current pipeline when building uh, learning inference, deep learning inference at the very edge. Uh, the keynote was presented by Bert Moons, who is a research scientist at Qualcomm. Uh, essentially, Bert talked about how we are trying to transform models from uh, 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 heavily accurate trained models with a large number of parameters that cannot fit on the targeted tiny ML devices. And uh, he gave um, a lot of uh, uh, insights on how basically you start from, you know, let's say neural architecture search to find your best model. Then you try to do compression through uh, pruning and other compression techniques, and then try to put everything together through accurate quantization and Bert gave an uh, overview of what are the current practices today when it comes to going from uh, NAS to quantization and pruning and how to shrink uh, the accuracy mod the, the, the models with preserving accuracy as much as possible. And of course, he talked about how um, Qualcomm is working on making this uh, uh, pipeline more efficient, more uh, accurate and maintaining 
as uh, much accuracy and efficiency as possible, uh, even when mapped on uh, tiny devices, uh, for example, the Snapdragon architecture that Qualcomm uh, um, uh, provides to a lot of uh, um, uh, cellular companies and mobile phones. Um, on the second day of the event, or the technical day of the event, we actually heard how TinyML goes beyond audio and beyond vision, which are considered the most common applications that people look at the very edge. Uh, in fact, uh, Wolfgang uh, Furtner from Infineon uh, talked on how we can integrate sensors such as, for example, LiDAR, uh, radar-based sensors, or uh, air detection, air quality monitoring sections, uh, sensors such as CO2 monitoring sensors, uh, other chemical sensors that can detect and um, emit uh, specific uh, uh, data when they recognize some sort of uh, atmospheric pressure change or things like that. Um, essentially, uh, if we had to emulate the five human senses, uh, Wolfgang talked about how uh, we can solve problem by using the sensors of the uh, sense, uh, the smell and the touch, versus our eyes and our ears that are usually for uh, language and uh, vision processing that we uh, usually toggle in, uh, in most uh, um, ML applications. Uh, he gave some uh, current projects that Infineon is working on using these sensors and using tiny ML. Uh, and he demonstrated how we can use uh, novel algorithms, maybe not deep learning, maybe not uh, convolution and neural networks, but other uh, AI uh, that can be um, used in uh, tiny ML environments, uh, maybe microcontrollers and so on uh, to help uh, in, uh, for example, wearable biomedical applications or environmental monitoring applications as well. Um, and last but not least in the technical keynotes, we had um, uh, uh, Charlotte Frenkel, uh, who is a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute of Neuroinformatics at the University of Zurich, uh, and she talked on both a bottom-up and a top-down approach in building um, uh, neural processing systems uh, following neuromorphic intelligence and bio-inspired uh, approaches in neuromorphic computing. Um, Charlotte actually talked about bottom-up design on how to use large-scale silicon integration uh, and uh, transfer from the basic building blocks that, uh, that, that build up essentially uh, neural information processing paradigms such as the neurons and the synapses that connect the neurons. Uh, but she also showed how we can go uh, from the algorithms all the way down to the silicon itself. Uh, by using uh, neuroscience, neuromorphic processors, and neuroscience observations as well. And she demonstrated some examples of uh, existing techniques, both developed in academia, but also in industry, uh, such as IBM's uh, True North chip and Intel's uh, Lohi chip, and of course, uh, the Spinnaker architecture, as well as other uh, academic um, techniques uh, such as Odin and Morphe IC and so on. Um, we also wanted to uh, engage with uh, the, uh, the, the people, the community, uh, not necessarily on what are the technical advancements in, in TinyML, but also what are the, what is the, the landscape? What is the, the framework that will, will enable the ecosystem to grow and become sustainable uh, in the future. And by ecosystem, I mean the whole spectrum of tiny ML, including uh, uh, companies, entrepreneurs, business uh, managers, and other stakeholders beyond the researchers, either academia or industry. So uh, we had the pleasure of hosting uh, Dr. Colette Maloney, who is the head of unit microelectronics and photonics uh, in the European Commission. Uh, under the Directorate General of the Communications Networks, uh, Content and Technology um, uh, sector. And uh, Dr. Maloney talked about what 
strategies and what undertaking opportunities is Europe trying to take uh, to achieve and provide the framework and the policies for us as a community to help uh, Europe achieve uh, their goals. And uh, she specifically talked about the testing and experimentation facilities uh, on HAI, which is a program that will be um, uh, leveraged, if, you, if I can use the word, in the next uh, couple of years through uh, strategic uh, research funding calls. And the idea is that we want to offer, well, Europe wants to offer uh, the end users a fast track to prototyping, a fast track to pilot production and industry transfer, supporting uh, the, the SMEs uh, uh, through Europe's digital innovation hubs. And um, also uh, one of the things that she talked about is how we would like uh, to build the next uh, digital decade communication or the digital compass, as uh, she called it, where uh, Europe is focusing on the skills, uh, on the infrastructures, on the business, and of course, on the government, all necessary uh, players uh, that uh, facilitate the successful deployment of a tiny ML ecosystem uh, in Europe and the Middle East and Africa region in the next uh, a uh, few years, the next decade, uh, uh, we should say. Now, um, going beyond the, the, the technical keynotes and of course the policy making keynotes, uh, we also had the opportunity to demonstrate and showcase uh, real world applications, innovation and advancements in research that takes place in the EMEA community uh, in TinyML. So uh, we also featured uh, 10 uh, tiny talks, as we call them, which were 12 to 15 minute uh, technical talks presented by various uh, uh, companies and uh, academic uh, research uh, institutions in the EMEA region. Uh, the talks were selected after being evaluated by our uh, technical program committee. And uh, the objective of these talks were to uh, showcase in uh, 12 to 15 minutes and engage with the audience uh, existing research in TinyML. Uh, we had various um, uh, talks. Uh, for example, we had a talk about how to build a TinyML powered artificial noise, a uh, nose, sorry. Uh, we had uh, uh, tiny talks on how to build uh, battery free. Uh, long-range wireless smart camera to, that detects uh, faces. Uh, we had uh, application of tiny ML going from face detection to a real-life commercial deployment that shared the whole experience, the whole pipeline in the development. And specifically, I would definitely uh, urge all of you to watch this on YouTube uh, by EMSA that showed how to do that and what were the, 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 the hardships and the difficulty in developing that product. Um, we also had broad participation, as I mentioned, uh, from the EMEA region. We had um, how a tiny presentation on how tiny ML can help uh, detect uh, and predict how cholera, uh, which as you know, it's um, uh, causing a lot of suffering in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, can be detected using tiny ML in rural communal water taps in uh, Rwanda. Uh, we had uh, 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 projects presenting us, for example, uh, biomedical applications such as a very tiny uh, ECG analyzer and uh, many more. So I kindly ask everybody that's interested in finding out more about the technical content of these talks to visit uh, the YouTube that Evgeny mentioned in the beginning and uh, watch these talks as well. Um, but uh, because TinyML, uh, we, we didn't want TinyML to remain only in the selected few, we also wanted to give the opportunity to other partners as well to provide us a shorter view, which we call them lightning talks, where the participants had uh, up to five minutes to talk about a product, a demo, an application and so on. We got some information, some very uh, interesting um, uh, talks and applications here as well. We had a demo about how to watch 
uh, birds and recognize various types of birds for bird watchers. Uh, we had uh, a talk about how to predict faults in a water pump uh, and uh, how we can use TinyML to actually uh, do that accurately, helping uh, uh, water uh, systems and uh, water boards. Uh, and as we all know, uh, water is one of the most fundamental uh, necessities, infrastructures uh, in any society today. So obviously you can see that even the most tiniest, and I'm not saying that in the sense of the tiny mail, but in the sense of the contribution, uh, um, projects can help uh, a lot when it comes to uh, our communities uh, today. Um, we also had, uh, we also gave the floor to uh, the tiny mail's partners uh, to hear about what's going on in their uh, developments, in their uh, research and innovation activities. Uh, we had the opportunity to hear from Fatih Porigli from Qualcomm about how uh, Qualcomm is using um, uh, video perception, how is Qualcomm using various uh, algorithms and various uh, techniques they can build a uh, very power efficient video perception through TinyML and through AI. Uh, we also had the opportunity to find out more about Newton.ai uh, uh, AutoML framework that miniaturizes various models uh, so that uh, we can create compact models without losing any precision, without losing any uh, accuracy. And uh, the opportunity uh, was also given to the audience to ask questions and find out more uh, about uh, Qualcomm's and Newton's work as well. And uh, through this partner session, we also had the opportunity to find out how Edge Impasse, and specifically uh, the talk was given by Jan uh, Youngboom, uh, um, how Edge Impasse is working on building an AutoML um, a pipeline that uh, was used in real world embedded devices. And by real world, Jan talked a lot of uh, applications that are relevant to the broad community, not only uh, in terms of um, high-tech infrastructure in smart cities, but also in low-tech and mobile and urban environments. And he gave the example of Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, uh, and how uh, students there and researchers there can use uh, Ion Tuner uh, to conduct, um, to build uh, tiny models and use them um, in the community. And uh, in fact, uh, this was very relevant to the, uh, pa the, the panel that ARM as a partner uh, was uh, hosting as part of the Tiny ML uh, forum. And uh, it couldn't have been different other than called Tiny ML for good. Uh, in particular, the panel featured several people from ARM as well as uh, practitioners that um, followed uh, either a gym pass or arm or the students that took part in this in the in the forum uh, where uh, demonstrated several examples on how tiny mail can be used without cost without a lot of effort uh, to solve real world problems uh, that uh, some underdeveloped countries are having today and uh, not only that though but also in how tiny mail can be um, uh, can be transported, can be mobilized, if you wish, in uh, remote uh, scenarios, uh, solving problems at the very, very edge of the infrastructure, and sometimes without even having communication with the uh, mainland infrastructure, you want to call it as well. So this panel was actually uh, one of the, I believe, uh, and this is coming from me as uh, one of the program chairs, I believe it's a must-see panel because uh, uh, the people participating identified a lot of real-world problems that do not take a lot of effort for researchers and engineers to get inspired and start solving. And even the tiniest uh, brick can build a very efficient wall if used uh, uh, correctly. So uh, going back now to what I mentioned earlier about the tiniest brick, I think, and this is something that we all pretty much believe that uh, the next generation of tiny ML researchers, the next generation of tiny ML practitioners are the students in universities today. So we wanted to give the opportunity to these students to showcase their work 
uh, with the work and showcase their research and their projects that are developing uh, with uh, as part of their university studies. Uh, for that reason, we actually had an open call uh, for various uh, students uh, to submit their work. Unfortunately, we only had time for 16 uh, posters. We received over uh, 30, I believe, uh, submissions for that. Some of these were exceptionally good as well, but we unfortunately did not have time to accommodate all of them. Uh, however, uh, I think that um, as uh, part of the global tiny mill movement, some of these students will be invited to provide further insights on their work in future events. But uh, I also urge you uh, just to get an idea on what these students are working and what the next generation of uh, uh, researchers are bringing into the picture to go into the YouTube uh, channel and see some of these uh, uh, works. Uh, the videos are very short, uh, four to five minutes each. So each one of you should not uh, need to spend too much time to get an idea on what uh, interesting projects uh, these students are working on. And uh, uh, the, one of the most important aspects of the forum is that it was very diverse, both in terms of gender, but also in terms of geographical participation. We had uh, both a, a large number of male and female researchers. We had uh, uh, people participating from all the, across the EMEA region, uh, from Nigeria, from Kenya, from Israel, from uh, 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 Cyprus, from uh, Northern Europe, from Eastern Europe, from uh, a lot of uh, countries. So it was a truly EMEA uh, event. And of course, we had to offer a nice uh, visionary talk, a career advice, if you wish, uh, uh, if you wish uh, to the students and who else, uh, who better to give that, that uh, VJ Ready, one of the uh, key people leading various tiny ML activities and uh, uh, VJ gave them a very nice uh, talk. Uh, he called it the top in his uh, words, uh, 10 commandments uh, for a career in tiny ML. I believe the talk is also on YouTube. So any students that did not have the opportunity uh, to see that or early stage researchers, I strongly recommend that you go and watch the talk because from what uh, uh, the students told, that is, uh, told us, it was very uh, inspiring. Um, we also had a couple of other people from the EU talking us about um, the, the, the policies and the landscape as part of the the forum. Uh, specifically, we had Dr. Marco Ceccarelli and uh, Dr. Cecile Huet, both of them uh, program officers and deputy head of robotics and artificial intelligence in the European Commission. Uh, the, the Both of them talked about how the upcoming uh, frameworks for research and innovation in Europe uh, are building sustainable development goals and how tiny ML uh, can help uh, and can participate in this uh, vision uh, for the next uh, generation uh, EU uh, research and innovation. Uh, the participants had the opportunity to ask uh, questions uh, uh, to the officers and get answers both in terms of policy making and you know why certain strategic initiatives were taken or what could have been taken in the next uh, round of uh, calls, maybe in one or two years. Uh, and uh, the good thing about uh, this, uh, it was interactive. So the officers had the opportunity to engage in discussion with the audience live without any, um, uh, you know, you only have two minutes or you have one minute that usually takes place in online uh, forums. I think this was one of the most, uh, uh, on, lo long ongoing uh, topics uh, that took for a while uh, in the forum. And I believe that uh, this was very uh, productive because it gave the opportunity to researchers to find out how their research can be absorbed by the community and what is the policy framework that allows this research to be uh, transferred to the society through various actions uh, taken by the policymakers in Europe. Um, we also featured uh, three success stories because we wanted to inspire the community that good things happen uh, to the tiny ML community as well. Um, uh, we uh, actually 
Uh, let me, there was a question in the chat and given that the question was asked uh, now before I go to the stories. Oh, it's my, uh, hi, Smile. <laughs> Uh, yes, the, um, uh, the, the, the question is whether we are planning to build a Horizon Europe consortium for a co uh, coordination and support action. This is something that actually was asked during the forum and actually was one of the parts that the participants on the forum mentioned that it would be a good idea through the community to start building this. Uh, we haven't yet followed up with that, but it's something that we plan to do in the next uh, uh, maybe a few months. So uh, if you are interested, of course, uh, please stay tuned and uh, we can uh, maybe create as part of the meetup groups in Europe further opportunities to do that. Um, so uh, going back, we heard from uh, Marianne Verhers, who is an associate professor at KU Leuven on a successful uh, European Research Council program that helped her uh, actually produced some uh, novel tiny mill uh, circuits uh, and uh, her work that actually helped her engage with the industry and, um, and uh, um, uh, present some solutions and some successful outcomes through that project. Uh, we found out from Danilo, who as Evgeny mentioned, will be one of the speakers, uh, one of the next uh, tiny mill uh, meetup talk uh, speaker next week on uh, how uh, ST helped as part of a project uh, build a, um, a sensing platform for uh, earthquake detection. Uh, and this was something that was developed in the aftermath of the uh, Aquila earthquake in Italy. Uh, so there you go, TinyML has been already successfully used for good. And uh, lastly, we saw uh, the outcome of a project by IMEC that was successful in terms of building um, a spike-based uh, device for the extreme edge uh, that was only recently finished uh, by IMEC as well. So we had the opportunity through these success stories to be inspired uh, about what we can do in the future and um, also be encouraged by this, that uh, success uh, when you work hard and when you take in principle and we collaborate with uh, uh, the, the, the researchers and the community, you can build a lot of things uh, using tiny mill. Um, before I talk about uh, the future, uh, we also had, uh, and this is relevant to the question that uh, Smile asked earlier, um, the, the, um, the tiny mill community did not wait, of course, until the first uh, forum to start. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives, both uh, globally, but also in the EMEA region, uh, using the so-called meetup groups. Uh, we had some of these 33 meetup groups from 23 countries actually present uh, their activities. Specifically, we had the Israel, the Italy, the Kenya, the Morocco, the Nigeria, and the Sweden uh, meetup group. And for those of you who would like to find out about how to join these communities, you can follow the QR code and also follow through the website. And uh, you are um, more than welcome to join uh, uh, the existing media groups, or you can follow uh, the instructions and maybe start uh, the na a national meetup group on TinyML, which will help uh, build uh, consortiums for various proposals or various collaborations as my last uh, earlier. Uh, having said that... So, so uh, yeah. Tio, just one update. Since the yes, uh, uh, forum, uh, we have one more group that started in uh, South Africa. So now we have 34 groups in 27 countries. Thank you, Evgeny. That was live until as we speak. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I think you join at a very... Uh, at a very key moment, because I think what was the most exciting part of the of the forum, and uh, I left it last uh, but not least, uh, was a panel that was moderated by Time and Black and Ward from Qualcomm. Uh, Time and invited five people uh, from various backgrounds, uh, from the business world, from the research world, from uh, academia, from industry, but also from industry that has nothing to do with TinyML and managed to get them 
to identify synergies, identify challenges, and most importantly, identify opportunities on how all these stakeholders can come together uh, to join forces and take advantage of TinyML to grow both in an entrepreneur business way, but also uh, do TinyML for good, which are the examples that we talked about earlier and so on. Uh, in fact, there was a follow-up uh, um, activity through the panel and uh, the panelists provided their view and I tried to summarize them. And uh, the panelists mentioned the need to diffuse uh, the appetite and provide support on TinyML in higher education and research, which is something that uh, this is up to us academics and uh, uh, can be done easily. But at the same time, uh, we need to evangelize and promote TinyML to the companies that don't know yet how they can benefit from it in that way that they can understand and absorb these technologies, but also open up a much larger application spectrum as well. Uh, furthermore, the panelists uh, uh, expressed uh, the opinion that we should also lower the barrier to exploration, evaluation, and adoption in real life. And by real life, it can be obviously either for good or for business. This is not by any means one does not uh, restrict the other, but at the same time, we all share uh, the common uh, cause. And uh, of course, we can do that only when we do it together. Therefore, we need to collaborate not only within a national or a European or say African or uh, Middle East framework, but also uh, globally, because we can share experiences, we can share data. And by talking about data, and this was actually one of the panel's uh, highlights, uh, uh, data is what fuels ML and data is also what uh, drives the applications of tiny ML and ML of course in general. Therefore, by sharing data, by exchanging data, we can truly democratize, truly um, uh, make tiny ML uh, visible to anyone and achieve what we call explainable AI and so on. And we are able to shift tiny ML to truly everybody and not only for those who have the money uh, in the data centers and uh, not being able to build uh, on per need model right at the applications edge that is usually where tiny ML uh, is needed. And I'm happy to say that we have seen these collaborative clicks happening right after the tiny ML EMEA forum. Uh, we have seen companies that participate at the forum uh, ship hardware and uh, some other, so, you know, provide uh, software and other and data to researchers and researchers sharing their work with the companies as well. Uh, and this already happened and not even two weeks after the, the forum. So uh, if this has happened and it's starting to happen and it will continue to happen, then that means that our time, our investment in bringing the community together for the first EMEA forum was meaningful, uh, both in terms of inspiring, but also uh, giving a practical experience to the attendees, to the people that presented, to the people that watched uh, and uh, brought the community uh, together. So um, as I mentioned earlier, you can go and see all the recordings uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can scan the QR, the, the QR code there to go straight to the YouTube channel. And as of July 14th, July 20, uh, 2021, uh, you, the Tiny ML channel featured 255 videos with 121,000 views. So uh, that is a lot of content. And I'm sure that if you are interested in finding out about the specific talk or uh, technical advancement that was presented at the Tiny ML EMEA forum, uh, you will find it there uh, without any uh, without any editing. So it's straight as it was presented live, as well as the interactive presentations that took place, which I think uh, is what we missed uh, quite a lot during this uh, pandemic. So 
Um, the opportunity to grow in the tiny mill is uh, there, as I always said, uh, on Meetup. You can follow the QR code. You can visit the website and find out how to join uh, our communities across the globe. Um, and of course, uh, the LinkedIn tiny email community uh, as well. So join us on LinkedIn. You can find updates, you can find trends, you can find uh, uh, the news that take place in our community worldwide. Uh, there is a question about uh, from Greg, are the presentation slides of today in EMEA uh, 21 available? The presentation slides from today will be available tomorrow, as Olga said, uh, I mean, as Jenny said at the very beginning. Uh, and I believe the, all the talks from the EMEA have already been available at the YouTube channel as well. So the answer is yes. Yeah, I think the presentations are all on the TinyML uh, website, uh, tinyml.org, or, or and yeah. the, the, the videos are on the YouTube. Yeah, and today's uh, this uh, video now will be available tomorrow uh, for everybody to watch as well. Um, I, I guess that's it from me right now. I would like to see if anybody would like to have any question or uh, answer anything uh, I mean, or uh, find out more. Um, I will be very happy also to uh, answer questions over email or on the tiny email forums as well. Uh, you can visit the more the forums at tinyml.org uh, slash forums and leave a question there. Uh, the question could be technical or not technical. For example, if you want to find uh, out more about the specific talk or you would like to contact the speaker, uh, and you need any type of help, by all means, please let me know. Uh, and if you also have any suggestions or any feedback for next year's event, um, I'll be happy to send it to the next year uh, chair, who is also going to be Peter. Uh, uh, so I will convey any messages to him as well. Right. So pe people may wonder what, what is going to happen next year. So I think uh, we are planning the event next year. I think this year event, uh, was very successful again. Thank you, Tio and Peter and, and, and the whole community and TPC for making it so successful. I think I was uh, reflecting after the, the forum and uh, I would say the two words that came to my mind were the, the quality of speakers and presentations and everything. And the other one was this collaborative spirit, which was Kind of a pleasant surprise in a way because people in Europe thought, well, we are kind of all doing all different things, but this forum really brought all people from Europe and Africa together, and a lot of participation from Asia, from 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 the, from from North America as well. So that was really a good start for the for the community in 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 the region. And next year, I'm sure we're going to have an awesome event. I mean, the details are still in planning, but. Uh, Peter is going to be the chair and uh, Tio is going to be in the, in the advisory role. So I think that will be a really great, great um, event next year. And besides the European event, we'll have the summit in January. Um, and it's uh, it's planned to be in person here in, 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 in the Bay Area in California. And uh, we will have a tiny ML Asia event in the beginning of November um, this year. Unfortunately, it still will have to be virtual. Yeah, so I think you saw the pool questions. I think, uh, again, I would like to uh, thank Tio for the excellent summary. Uh, Jenny, there's a question by Greg. Will next year be online as well? Uh, the plan is to have it physically. Yeah, I, I think uh, there is a kind of a trade-off between online and uh, in-person physical events. Obviously, the online give you broader global reach, but I think uh, at the same time, People are people, we need to interact. And I think a lot of collaborations come from just physical interactions. Uh, so I think we definitely favor in-person event, but it depends on how the situation will evolve and the travel restrictions and, and, and so on. So for now, we assume it's going to be in person, but things may or might change rapidly. So, yeah. Um, again, thank you to you. And uh, let me acknowledge again our sponsors. Uh, for, for the tiny ML talk series. So it's ARM, Deep Light, Edge Impulse, Amza, Green Waves, Latent AI, HOTG, Maxim Integrated, Kixo, SenseML, Reality AI, Qualcomm, SenseML, and Sintian. And uh, again, more sponsorships are available. 
So ARM is a very well-known company in this community for the software and hardware tools uh, they develop for TinyML. Then we have DeepLight. Uh, they use AI to make other AI faster, smaller, and more power efficient. That's a startup based in Montreal in Canada. Uh, Edge Impulse is an international uh, company doing tiny email for all developers. They are based in uh, um, many parts of the world, uh, Amsterdam, uh, California, and other parts. Amza Visual Sense, uh, it's a small company in, um, in Israel. Uh, they've been working on tiny ML vision for quite a while actually and making quite a bit of progress there. They also presented at the, at the IMEA event. It was a very interesting presentation there. Uh, Green Waves, uh, based in Grenoble in France. So they develop a next generation of sensors and uh, hearable products to process rich data with energy efficiency. HOTG uh, distributed uh, infrastructure for tiny ML applications. Uh, Letting the, uh, the AI drives um, adaptive AI for the intelligent uh, edge. Maxim integrated is active um, in this space as well. Uh, they enable edge intelligence with several offerings like advanced AI acceleration, low power uh, Cortex M4 and the sensor and signal conditioning. Kixo, uh, they develop auto ML tools uh, for very energy efficient uh, uh, ML at the edge. Uh, Qualcomm is advancing AI research to make efficient AI ambiguous. Reality AI and add advanced sensing to your products with HAI Tiny ML. And uh, SenseML builds uh, smart IoT sensor devices from data. Uh, Synsense, it's a startup company based in Switzerland, so they build uh, sensing and appearance hardware for ultra-low power embedded mobile and edge devices based on neuromorphic uh, computing uh, um, uh, concepts. And Sintian is a startup uh, uh, in the Southern California, in the Irvine area, They're developing hardware and uh, tools for uh, AI at, at, at the edge. So again, uh, in our uh, good tradition, uh, we'll have uh, next Tuesday, 8, 8, 8 a.m. with uh, Daniela Pau's presentation on, from ST Micro on better productivity leveraging AI community uh, driven interability. And I think this concludes our session today. Thank you for your participation. And uh, we will see you um, in, um, in a week.